Let's Get Fit is a 2022 exercise game that brings a new flavour and style of training for a reasonable price. Much like how you need the nicest ingredients to make the best cake possible, Ravens Court and Voxler have selected their fitness features well to combine into this new game for Nintendo Switch. A fitness game review from a personal trainer using a cake metaphor. That's it, buckle up. Let's look into Let's Get Fit and thank you so much to Kosh Media ANZ for providing me with the review copy. The first ingredient that I want to talk about is the part I was most excited about, which is the exercise selection, because the promise of over a hundred different exercises was so intriguing and would beat out every other Switch fitness title for variety. So after getting into the game and trying out a few different workouts and progressing through some of the programs, I am happy to confirm that the types of exercise are really good. Because of how the game functions, it's all body weight based and so you've got your more basic movements like squats, punches, lunges, you've got your jumping jacks, your planks and some lovely mobility moves like kneel to squat and burpees. And then you get progressions that feature additional movements, plyometrics and combos like squat punch and push up burpee. So those 100 movements feature five or so different squats, lunges, burpees, kicks, etc. But that's not a bad thing, no, <laughs> not at all. It's actually fantastic. There are so many different variations and progressions and regressions of each basic type of move that it means that no matter what your difficulty level, you should be able to find something that suits you. And there are some exercises that I've not been using in my own training as well, which has been really, really fun to do. The kneel to squat and some of the mobility moves are giving me a nice little challenge to add in. And I really enjoy that, I really enjoy that. The dev have clearly put a lot of thought into the exercise variety here and that's fantastic because that is arguably one of the most important parts of the cake. Um, it's like the flour I guess. Eggs can be a binding agent in cakes so the equivalent here that holds a let's get fit together is the variety of modes. There are three types, free, program and challenge. Program is the main workout mode. Depending on your difficulty you'll get access to varieties of 30 day programs with different goals and intensities. You select one and then it gives you a different workout to do each day for 30 days. You can only have one program active at a time so choose carefully. If you do start a new one it cuts the progress from the previous one and then you start again from day one. It's pretty cool there are a lot of different goals to choose from. You can focus on your arms, your legs, you can do flexibility, you can do cardio. There's a whole bunch of stuff so depending on what you're looking for out of this game you should be able to find a workout that works for you. Free mode or custom mode is where you can either create your own workout by selecting specific parameters and letting the game generate a workout for you or use one of the pre-made workouts available. This is actually where you'll find your warm-ups and your cooldowns, as well as just a bunch of one-off workouts that can really supplement your work, or you can just do it if you don't feel like doing your program at the moment. I really like the hit training one with Mike, it's like the five minute intense exercises. There's a decent variety there and it gave me a nice little challenge, so I recommend you try that one out as a level five difficulty one. I think this mode is pretty cool, especially for people who don't know masses about exercise selection or how to structure a program properly. But for me personally, it would have been really nice to choose the specific exercises that you you can put in each workout. You see, you fill in your parameters and then it generates a workout and you can regenerate it until you get something that you like, but you can't actually select which exercises to use. And for me personally, I like to structure things the way that I structure them, the way that I've taught, as well as how I've learned more about structuring as I've been a PT. You know, you learn on the job. But unfortunately, I can't structure things the way that I want. I'm at the mercy of the game. And whilst that's not so much a bad thing for beginners, for me, I'd rather have my own options to select. You know. There is also challenge mode where you can select the challenge to work towards. At launch there was only a plank challenge available but new ones become available each Sunday with the second one being a push-up challenge to help you build to a certain amount of consecutive push-ups. The time or number for your goal depends on your set difficulty. Level 1 has a goal of 2 minute planks as seen in the trailer whereas level 3 has a goal of a 4 minute plank. These are again 30 day challenges which are really cool in my opinion. It gives a really interesting structure to work towards as well as some different facets of fitness to bring into to your workouts. Now as far as this review goes I haven't actually completed a program or a challenge because it's not been 30 days since I got the game. Now I wanted to make sure that I had appropriate amount of time in order to see how they handle programming and progression and I think that I have managed to see that over the week. I've seen how they deal with the week and how the intensity wavers. So I've not completed the full thing, I'm going to do a full program and challenge review in a little bit but right now I can see how they are working towards getting you to do better. You see, as a PT, it's not just exercise variety that's important to me. It's programming and exercise selection because you need the right tools for the job. You don't mix cake batter on a plate or on the kitchen side. You do it in a good bowl. So are they using the right tools to get you where you need to go? I believe they are using a decent programming and progression structure. It's not perfect, but it is going to work. Every workout is structured as a circuit. 
It's a circuit training game basically, which is frankly a fantastic concept. Multiple sets of exercises with rest periods keeps your heart rate up and is good for calorie burning. As far as selecting appropriate exercises, the game does that really well. It takes what your goal is, what your challenge is, what your difficulty is, and it does something that is relevant to what you need to do. If you're doing cardio, it's doing full body or it's using your glutes and legs a lot. If you're doing arms, obviously it's working your shoulders, it's working your back, it's working your chest. And especially it's not just focusing on your rectus abdominis for your abs, which is often a little bit of a thing with ab workouts that you see. The programs progress with intensity over time, with some heavier sessions being followed by lighter days with less sets and more rest, which is decent. I was genuinely concerned about that. The issue I have with the programs is actually not so much the exercises they choose, it's to do with the frequency of the exercises. You see, it doesn't seem to be prioritizing good recovery. It's using the same muscle groups over and over and over again every day. I'm using my glutes and quads very heavily seven days a week, which isn't really going to give it time to properly recover. Um, which could lead to further injury. The kneel to stand exercise, primarily a mobility move that could be tough on people unused to the movement, was done six days in a row for me. Very quad and glute heavy, so the game doesn't prioritize good recovery well. The exercise order isn't particularly great either. Maybe this is me being a little bit too picky, but I noticed that quite a few of the more static moves were being done towards the end of some workouts, whereas your plyometric explosive moves, like your tuck jumps and stuff, were appearing at the start. Now, if you don't give your body appropriate time to warm up, you're not going to be able to generate as much force when you're doing an explosive move. And because your muscles are a little bit less pliable, you are actually a little bit more prone to injury if you're doing them at the start of a workout. You need to properly warm them up. So I was a little bit unsatisfied with the exercise order for some of the days. Some of them were great though. So it's a little bit 50-50. As far as those injuries that I just mentioned, they can be avoided with a good warm-up. And the warm-up for Let's Get Fit isn't actually too bad. It's got a good range of dynamic movements, but it is a little bit short. There is a longer warm-up in the custom workout area though. The cool down is, well, the same sort of situation. It's a bit short, but it has a decent range, which makes me recommend doing your own thorough static stretching session instead after your workouts. Even still, these are better warm-ups and cool-downs than a fair few of the other exercise games available on the Nintendo Switch. As far as the workouts go, which is the core ingredients of the cake that is Let's Get Fit, I think they're pretty appropriate. I think they're pretty good. There's good intensity, good variety, and even though I've got a few issues with the exercise order, it's still gonna get you sweating and get you towards your goals pretty well. This actually fills a niche of circuit training very well because there aren't particularly other games that do it as well as Let's Get Fit does. There's some quality ingredients here, even if repeated exercises and exercise order isn't perfect. And when you're mixing your cake, you wanna make sure that you're using good utensils to get the smoothest texture possible. And so as far as the utensils you're using for Let's Get Fit, well, that would be the Joy-Cons. There are two control methods. The main one is the dual Joy-Con with the sports strap set, which is sold with the physical retail edition of the game. This includes an arm strap and a leg strap akin to the Ring Fit Adventure. These are fine, although the plastic and holdings feel a little cheap, they keep the Joy-Con secure when you're moving, which is great. The leg strap features the same classic issue that Ring Fit Adventures leg strap has, which is that it slips down a lot. I'm finding that this one is slipping a lot more during gameplay, albeit that might be because the movements are typically much more dynamic in this game. The motion detection is fine. A lot of the arm strap stuff works pretty well. The detection for that one seems to work the majority of the time. The leg strap, however, is a little bit, a little bit dodgier as far as detection goes, unfortunately. I'm finding that a lot of movements are working fine, but some of them, like the squat, I'll find that only eight out of 10 register properly. And then some of your more dynamic moving ones, like your air bicycle crunches, or your squat to side kicks, or your lunge jumps, the detection just isn't working effectively at all, which is really, really weird and quite, quite demotivating. The game also features isometric moves, which is really great to increase the exercise variety and create a different type of stress on your muscles. But the detection, again, is very picky here. And I find that with planks and even tree pose that the game dips in and out of detection quite often. It's based on both hand and leg strap positioning, which is pretty cool using both of them, but also frustrating when it suddenly stops detecting, which makes you lose points. This actually brings me into one of my larger problems with Let's Get Fit, and that is that one of the main motivational techniques, in fact, arguably the main motivational technique it uses, is a score-based system. You see, you get good points for good exercises, and you get like a minimal points for messing up an exercise. With the high scores, you can get up on the leaderboard, and currently, at time of writing, I am first in the world, which is really fun.
But when the motion controls don't detect your movements properly and are kind of a little bit picky and you're not detecting properly through its main control scheme, well, that's just kind of frustrating. It basically negates its main motivational technique, which is kind of like mixing a cake with a bad utensil. You know, you're getting a rough, imperfect texture that's gonna make a lumpy cake. There is an alternate control scheme though, especially for those who can't get the game physically, i.e. this part of the world. It's a single Joy-Con held in your hand like most motion games and it detects all movement based off the hand, so it doesn't really detect the legs at all. It's a lot easier to get perfect motions, but they also penalise you score-wise for using the control scheme as well as alter your programs to make them use less moves. Now this doesn't seem fair to me because the peripherals to use its main motion control scheme aren't that accessible to a large swathe of the target audience. Now, there are alternate versions to get. I've linked a couple that were recommended by Kosh Media in the link below. They are affiliate links for me, so it does support the channel if you do want to get them. But that's not really the point. Penalizing you for using that secondary motion control scheme is frustrating because the score attack side of it is kind of the most game part of this title. But changing the programs is just a bit bit rough really. I guess the issue here though is that you can't really do masses about it. Now I have found a little bit of a workaround, it's not perfect, but if you have the leg strap from Ring Fit Adventure and you use that on your leg and you hold the other Joy-Con in your hand horizontally, that can detect the majority of the movements. It doesn't do push-ups and planks particularly well and you need to make sure you've got the grip on so that you don't lose your Joy-Con or throw it into the TV and stuff like that. But that can work and I honestly think that that should have been an alternate control scheme. There should have been a third one for people who do just have the leg strap because I'd argue that a huge amount of the target audience for Let's Get Fit have already played Ring Fit Adventure or maybe Nintendo Switch Sports that's got the leg strap as well. It would have been really cool to encompass that for people as well. I think it would have given people a little bit easier access to better points which could engage them and motivate them a bit more. And with the scores you have the online and friend leaderboards which is a nice bit of fun competing against your mates and all that but there is also some nice more game-esque features to create additional incentive and it's a decent bit of flavouring if you ask me. I'm talking of course about achievements and trophies. You get achievements for doing specific tasks whether they be exercise based so 50 perfect squats, 30 consecutive jumping jacks, uh, you can do a 60 minute plank like in total, not all in one go, uh, stuff like that. There's also the amount of calories you burn, the amount of days you've worked out, your consecutive days, how many programs you completed. There's a lot of different achievements that create a sense of completion for you and gives you an additional external incentive to work out with the game. And then depending on how long you've used the game, how many times a week you're using and what difficulty workouts you do, you also have the trophy system so that you can earn something else for your profile. It doesn't add anything tangible to the rest of the game, but I think that it creates an external motivator for you and that's a really cool little system to have in place in order to get you to work out with the game. I'm pretty happy to see something like this in Let's Get Fit. It's a tasty little ingredient that really, really spices it up and gives it a good flavor. I think it's a really cool addition and also at the time of writing, I've got the funny number. So <laughs> yeah, very good. Another key ingredient to a good fitness title, in my opinion, is teaching. There is little point to progression if you're going forward with bad form, and the game has in-depth tutorials for moves that break it down bit by bit with words and a movable model of the trainer to see how to perform each move. Sounds really good when I say it like that, doesn't it? But unfortunately, it only does it for moves that the developers have deemed difficult doesn't do it for every single move. Well, you can see the model for each move, but you can't see the word, you can't see the written description, which sometimes some people learn better with words. So it's a little bit frustrating to see them only do it for a few moves and not for all of them. It is so close to being great. It's like they've under sugared the cake and now it just, it just doesn't quite taste as good as it could. And as we all know, a good cake is decorated well too. Nice icing, writing, decorative features. It's got good presentation. And let's get Fitz presentation it's a little bit lacklustre, to be honest. The music is a by numbers affair. If it's your jam, it's your jam, and it is selectable if you really want to turn off particular pieces, or you can just turn the music and the sound effects off completely so you can play your own music through another device. My current recommendation for this is Carpenter Brew's new album, Leather Terror, which is fantastic, really, really good, and uh, basically for the cooldowns, anything by the midnight. The graphics are functional. I think that's the best way to put it. The little mini game where you have the changing environments based on your score is really cool, but with only four environments to see, it gets stale kind of quickly. 
The trainers are again extremely generic. The Jonesy from Fortnite looking guy is my favourite, but they all do what they do, motivate where they need to, and tell you when to rest. More vocal motivation would have been nice here to be honest, especially during the rest periods where there's this just sort of awkward silence. More information on why you're working out or health benefits from workouts could have been a really neat thing to add in here. The models do what they need, but don't seem to show perfect form. Now I'm in two minds about that, you see, not everyone playing the game is going to have perfect form and this shows relatively realistically how most people would do the form which is kind of you know kind of a decent thing in a way but there are also moves that definitely should have completely perfect form and show you how to do them like your squats your push-ups your burpees um, also your planks um, you know to show how you need to keep the core still in order to get additional stability benefits these things should have really been implemented perfectly i don't personally think that they reflect perfect form there. So yeah, I'm kind of in two minds about that one. I'm not really sure what to think about it. Unfortunately, sad to report there aren't much in the way of accessibility features at all, which is really disappointing. The calendar and stats are good and functional to help you keep track of your progress, albeit something that is really worth noting is the absolutely shocking calorie calculations. There is overestimating your calories and then there's whatever Let's Get Fit does. Um, it is kind of ridiculous, like for a, for a 15 minute workout, I reckon I burnt a thousand calories and that's just, <laughs> this isn't 300 workout guys. Like I'm not Gerard Butler, I'm not a Spartan. I should really train to be a Spartan, but I'm not. I'm not quite sure how it is so inaccurate. And things like this should definitely have been addressed during development. It's just kind of a little bit representative of how there's a little bit of lackluster care taken with the presentation of the game. So I guess when it's all combined and cooked together, the cake that is Let's Get Fit comes out in decent edible form. The devs have a good idea of the proper ingredients to add and knowing to get good exercise variety and variable intensities as well as multiple incentives to motivate players and have created a circuit training game that fills a fantastic niche on the Switch that isn't filled better than other fitness titles. Games like Fitness Boxing 2 and Knockout Home Fitness can't do circuits and the Ring Fit Adventure can, albeit not as well as Let's Get Fit does. However, some of those ingredients haven't been used properly or as well as they should and have been made a little bit roughly. The motion control issues can cause demotivation and frustration. The odd lack of physical availability compounds that and the presentation of the game really isn't great, which is a shame when the workouts are often so sweet and absolutely let you get your sweat on. I'm sure the main question on your mind going into this review is whether it's worth your time to buy Let's Get Fit and whether it's gonna be good for you for a workout. And honestly, I think the answer is yes. This is one of the better fitness titles on the Switch, despite my problems with it. You see, put together you've got a circuit training game that alters each day, giving decent progressions and a good way to do quick form exercise sessions. The movement detection, whilst dodgy at times, works as intended for a majority of exercises and frankly if you're okay with it, just ignore the motion detection and the scoring. I know it sounds a little bit weird, but if you want the challenge, it is there for you. I was hoping Let's Get Fit would be a little bit better than it is, but that doesn't mean that this is a bad fitness option because the variety and the intensity that it creates is unmatched in a lot of other games. And so if you're looking for a game to progress from, from Ring Fit or Fitness Boxing, I think this has a good level of challenge. Circuit training as well is pretty adept for weight loss if that is what you're looking for out of a game like this, which is often what people want. But it is far from perfect. The motion control issues are a bit of a problem for me. The fact that you are penalized for using an alternate motion scheme is weird in my opinion. And some of the exercise order things and the way that they structure the workouts isn't 100% perfect as I would do it. But take it as you will. Honestly, I'm happy with the different type of training that this provides and the different structured rest periods, which I think are really important as well. It's definitely interesting and can bring something really cool to your workouts if you're using the Switch for it. Going back to the cake metaphor, it's definitely not the best looking cake in the world and it's not the best tasting, but the bakers definitely had a lot of good intentions with it. They selected their ingredients pretty well. They've just not got the most amount of experience making it and it makes for an all right taste if you're in the mood for it. So it's kind of like, it's kind of like a Woolies mud cake, really. Um, it does the job, it does the job, but it's not gonna be for everyone. Any Australians who want to fight me about the quality of your mud cake, please, you know, come find me in the comments. And if you've got any other interesting ideas about Let's Get Fit or have you got it, any experiences you wanna chat about or any content you want me to make, please let me know in the comments, of course. Thank you so much for watching and please hit subscribe for lots more fitness gaming content on the way. Thank you to my patrons like Rain, I Love Waffles 1311 and Sick Hippie for their amazing support through Patreon. If you're interested in additional content and reviews from 
from me, please jump in there and see what you like. Thank you again to Kosh Media ANZ for providing me with the review copy. I've been Master Trainer Peter. I hope you're enjoying Let's Get Fit. I'll see you soon.